everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Nicole Forbes with Dennis's 70s and today we're talking all about peonies and how to grow and plant and care for and probably even a little bit about how to appreciate them um, because peonies are uh, just about to burst and it's uh, here this year as I have probably continually mentioned week after week it's been cold and rainy this spring so here in Portland we've had a wet late arriving spring uh, that continues today to be chilly and cold uh, although we seem to hopefully be rounding the corner uh, within the next few days it'll be uh, awesome warm planting season and um, let's just hope we don't turn back so peonies are typically, um, the, the herbaceous peonies are typically getting ready to bloom or blooming in like early to mid-May in some seasons, um, but they're not even quite fully open in, in my garden at least. Their, their buds have color to them, but they're still really tight, not, not yet a fully open flower in the garden. Um, but now is a great time to come in and select a peony based off of their flower color. Uh, so seeing them bloom in the garden center and taking them home. And uh, if that's the case, or if you, I just spoke with a friend who was given a peony and she's like, I haven't decided where to plant it yet. And of course I was like, well, tune in at 10. Um, so Sarah, I hope you're watching. When we talk about peonies, I mean there's a couple of there's a couple of basic I'm just going to call them facts. Let's get some basic facts out of the way. Um, peonies are one of those old-fashioned, like traditional. I even think of them around like Midwest farmhouses. You know, they're like a traditional plant that was in my grandmother's garden um they they look so fancy but they're really not they're not fancy they're not fussy not that they're not fancy they're not fussy um and they are deer and rabbit resistant which again is one of the reasons why we see them out in the country um, growing around farmhouses for example is because the the critters the deer and the rabbit um, population leave them alone so deer and rabbit resistant and long lived so a peony plant can easily uh, continue to be healthy and thrive in a garden bed for 50 years or more um, and so really like long lived is like really long lived you know like a tree um, and just getting bigger and better all the time now, once they're established, so after a couple of years, peonies are also known to be fairly drought tolerant. Um, so in a garden that, you know, you don't give a lot of summer watering or is not irrigated, um, peonies would be right at home. Now they do best in full sun, but are tolerant of light shade or filtered shade. The deeper the shade, the more impact you'll have on fewer flowers or smaller flowers so um you know best in sun they also want well draining soil um so drought tolerant in the long run uh, but not tolerant of like wet soggy or standing water type heavy clay or just wet soil in general in fact um, i do have pumice up here on my table we'll talk about when we get into the planting um, aspect of peonies to kind of add that extra grit add some drainage <clears throat> in the planting hole and even with your potting soil if you're going to put them in containers which we'll talk about as well now um, I these are not peonies I know because peonies are just just budded just barely in bloom I was able to find like one that is barely open and happens to be an example of um, a, of petal blight. So we have a disease here um, that we'll talk about when we talk about diseases. But one barely open peony 
Then I've got a couple of Ito peonies here that happen to be a first flower open. Other than that, not a, not a lot of actual buds blooming at the moment. So I brought in one of my favorite perennials to companion plant with peonies, and that is lupin. Um, and lupin uh, are blooming at a similar time, so they're just coming into flower at the moment. Um, in my garden, again, they're a little bit behind uh, this stage, just a little bit tighter budded. Uh, these come out of greenhouses, so they're pushed a little bit ahead. Um, we are looking at the West County, West Country? I always say West County, that was a glove. West Country series of lupin. And um, we write a little bit about them in this week's newsletter. So if you receive our newsletter and you're curious more about the West Country lupin, um, check out that just brief article and some fun pictures. They have just uh, coincidentally arrived at our garden centers um, in several different color combinations. And each of our locations has probably a little bit of a different um, assortment or selection. So, you know, you could make like a weekend round trip, um, do like the Den of 70s nursery crawl and pick up all of the lupin um, because once you've got one, you probably want more and they all look great together. So build your lupin collection. So of course, um, there's spiky, like tall, spiky flower stalk is a really nice contrast to the like round, almost rose looking flower form of the peony. And the same with the way that they grow with a taller flower spike, um, kind of again, complementary to that rounded bush form that most peony take. Peonies are fast growing, uh, whether they are the herbaceous type of peony or the Ito or the tree peonies. So let's talk about the different varieties of peonies. Herbaceous peonies. Herbaceous means that come winter time, the plant material that's above ground is killed back by frost and is um, melted or withered or even just kind of turns brown and dies back. Now that's everything above ground herbaceously, uh, that's the herbaceous portion, but the roots that are underground stay protected and alive <clears throat> on a herbaceous peony so that the following spring they push out their new growth that um, kind of quickly emerges straight out of the bare ground and um, begins to grow for the next season. So herbaceous peonies gone every winter and you could kind of look where they were and again there's like usually no sign that they're even there. So um, that's one difference. Herbaceous peonies end up at about two to three feet tall and wide. And usually, again, almost every stem that comes out of the ground has a flower. So this is a nice example of a peony called Red Charm with enormous flower buds. So look at these beautiful two, maybe well, inch, inch and a half diameter flower buds right now. <clears throat> this one, maybe in the light, we can see some of the shiny stickiness on this bud. So that'll go back to when we start talking about ants on peonies. Um, this is the shiny stickiness that the ants are after. There are a few ants on these flowers, but um, this morning when I collected the flat, you know, the plants inside, it was still pretty early and the ants aren't out yet. So. <clears throat> on this red charm, every stem that comes out of the ground ends in a flower bud. So another, well, maybe a few of the lower and more immature stems don't yet have flower buds, but they will next year. So stem terminates in a bud, stem terminates in a bud. <clears throat> so the bigger this plant gets, the more flowers, of course, we'll have each season. But right now we're looking at, uh, I think this is a three gallon plant. Uh, two, four, six, so seven flower buds just as a young plant. And of course, peonies can um, form secondary buds after you've cut the, the main flower bud. So you'll get a smaller bloom often um, after this first flush. But unfortunate, the unfortunate thing about peonies is their bloom time is relatively short. So the flowers can be fleeting. They can also be affected by the weather. 
So like a severe storm, windstorm, rainstorm, if you're herbaceous, especially peonies are like about to bloom, showing some color on the flower bud itself or like budded up and ready to bloom. And you know you're gonna have a, a windstorm or a rainstorm it might even just be a good idea to go out and make a bouquet with them because the, the next day you go out, they're going to be all on the ground. Um, possibly the, you know, like stems will be laying down. The flowers might be shattered from the wind and the rain. They're just kind of delicate. So um, it's a good excuse to just make yourself a bouquet because I know sometimes we're like torn between cutting the flowers and bring them in or leaving them outside. Herbaceous peonies tend to be um, a little bit weak stems, uh, have weak stems. So you can see once that big, big flower opens up, um, it just isn't strong enough to hold it. So herbaceous peonies also are the type of peony that benefits from a cage or staking or some other support system. Um, and I don't just mean like friends and family, like our support systems. So a grow through cage, this is, this is called a grow through grid. And a grow through grid is a nice support for peonies because you can put it on as the plant is young. You put it on close to the ground on these little stakes and it can raise or lower as the plants grow they grow through the grid. So you wouldn't go now to this peony and start trying to feed these through, which means that you have missed the opportunity to use a grow through grid this year. Um, but buy them and put them in your shed. And then once you've cut your peony back in the fall, you could either install the grow through grids right away or wait and put them down in the spring as the peony starts to grow up. Um, then, as I said, you can kind of raise this up to the height that works for your plants. Uh, this happens to be 16 inch legs, uh, but there's taller ones, bigger grids as well. This is an easy, it's easy one, it's basic, and you, each peony kind of stem ends up with a nice space of support for itself. So this one is, um, just makes a lot of sense, I guess you would say. But the most traditional support for peonies is a peony cage. And if this looks familiar, it's like the bottom half of a tomato cage, right? Uh, we didn't cut it. or It's slightly different in diameter and, and size and all of that. But comes in, of course, a galvanized steel or a powder-coated green uh, metal. <clears throat> These just the same. Shove them into the ground. Now you could still stake and and cage this peony if you wanted to i would of course either employ a friend to you know hold it nice and tight while i put this down over the plant or just lightly oh, just lightly tie the tops together so that you can feed it through your peony cage push this down to the ground and now in a rainstorm or windstorm the big blooms are going to have something to lean on to support them it might look like this would be kind of unsightly in your garden, but by the time plants are pretty full and lush, you don't see it very well. But as I mentioned, there is a green form if the you know metal bothers you in, in the garden. I find this cage wire diameter or whatever you, that's, I think that's the right term, wire diameter. Um, hummingbirds just love to sit on them. So... Um, my tomato cages seem to always have birds on them and hummingbirds for sure. And this, once the peony is out of bloom, um, this could just be like a hummingbird hangout um, for your, you know, in your garden. So just double, again, double duty. Um, or you could take it off once your peony is done blooming and put it back for storage. So herbaceous peonies, the pros and the cons, right? They die back in the winter. Um, they're easy care, but they do require some staking or caging for support. The Ito peonies, which we have here on either ends of my table. I have another Ito um, on a end table here at the end of my <laughs> end table at the end of my table. The Ito peonies are a cross. They are um, another term for them is intersectional peony. And that means that the herbaceous peony genetics 
were crossed with the tree peony genetics. And tree peonies are a slightly different form that I don't have on hand to really talk about today. Um, different in the sense that they leave a large woody structure or kind of stem above ground and create the more of a permanent, they don't die back every winter. So they have more of a permanent established structure in your garden, even though they do lose their leaves in the winter. Tree peonies have been known to also have like really big, um, really dramatic flowers. So crossing, oh, and sturdy stems. Crossing the tree peonies with the herbaceous peony has now brought the intersectional or eto peonies uh, to America, which has been like the result of a lifetime of breeding by a Japanese botanist. Then, of course, I don't even think he, I believe he did not survive to see his creation all the way to market. But once they, uh, once the science had kind of been started by this original pioneer, the work was picked up by future botanists who have now been able to deliver to us this Ito series of peonies. And Ito, I-T-O-H, you'll see, um, as always, there's a handout. It's attached just below the description of this class video. Um, it's a link to our blog. If you have any questions, uh, or cannot find the handout, just mention that in the comment section and we will zip it out to you in a reply. The handout has some, um, you know, nitty gritties and um, some pretty, pretty pictures as well. So of some of these uh, flowers, since I don't actually have them fully in bloom. But the Ito peonies <clears throat> have some bona fides or some, you know, unique characteristics that include uh, sturdy, sturdy stems. So they don't need to be staked. In fact, they don't require staking or support at all. They are, um, they have really attractive foliage. I mean, a herbaceous peony has pretty leaves and they turn pretty colors in the fall, the herbaceous peonies. But Ito peonies have, I think, really pretty foliage and are grown almost just as much as an ornamental uh, just an attractive ornamental shrub when they're out of bloom as well. They turn gorgeous fall colors. Um, so before they drop their leaves or fade in the winter, they turn pretty colors in the fall. <clears throat> they are a little bit wider than tall as they grow. So we're looking at a plant that ends up at about two and a half feet tall by maybe three, three and a half feet wide. The, um, added kind of genetic improvement in the plant is that they have improved disease resistance when compared to a herbaceous and herbaceous a herbaceous peony um, so petal blight as uh, i was kind of alluding to is a although peonies are really heavily disease and insect resistant there are a few things that bother them. And one is this like persistent wet spring can cause their foliage to get some fungal, um, like fungal leaf spot and foliage problems. Occasionally we see um, this petal blight problem occur. And that is as the peony flower is beginning to develop as it kind of slightly opens but doesn't open fast enough with warm weather, the flowers fill up with rain and cool water, and then that kind of sits in the bud and slowly starts to um, rot the, the petals themselves or, or cause the petals to decay. I started to pick it off um, thinking that I could, um, I don't know, show this flower like a good flower. Uh, but then I was like, you know what, I'm going to show this flower as a flower that has petal blight because that's probably even more educational than anything. So we're going to zoom in a little bit on this guy. <clears throat> and from the top, looks pretty darn good. It's a nice, pretty bud that's opening uh, just as we would expect. This is Sebastian Moss, by the way. Um, not Sebastian's fault, but it is a herbaceous, oops, herbaceous peony. So if I turn this flower over, you can start to see these brown 
kind of saturated. They're like soggy looking brown petals. And on the other side of the flower, the same. So this really discolored, it's not pink, it's actually brown at the base, pink towards the top, but it starts actually in the bud itself and is now, a, oop, we're shattering, now is affecting pretty much the entire peony. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and sort of disassemble this so that we can see how far the damage goes in. So it's actually even into this uh, reproductive portion of the plant where it's starting to cause the uh, stamens to fall apart or rot as well. <clears throat> so bud blast and petal blight are two common peony flower problems that are more associated with the wet weather than with like any, um, you know, issue in your soil or like some bad thing that you have to really worry about. Now, if I see this happening early on on one of my flowers, um, I could go ahead and spray the peonies with a fungicide to address the problem right away. And in many cases that may correct it in mid season and allow, you know, maybe a few more of the flower buds that have yet to be affected bloom successfully this year. So um, you'll see on the handout, but copper fungicide is probably one of the easiest to use. Um, it comes ready to spray. It is safe for organic gardeners and um, you could spray it like the day before or, you know, a few days before you cut that flower and even brought it in the house and not have like chemical interaction with it. Now, <clears throat> there is also um, a, has a systemic fungicide that could be applied if you're growing your peonies in mm, filtered sun, it's all you have, you know, you're just not in full sun, for example, they may be more prone to some of the fungal problems just because they don't dry out as quickly or as, or as easily in the day sun. And so um, using perhaps a systemic fungicide on a plant that has recurring disease issues season after season, that would make a lot of sense. So rather than trying to chase a problem down with the copper spray, I would use a systemic fungicide like Infuse, um, which you would spray on still, but then that's gonna be taken up inside the plant and give you a little bit longer uh, protection from inside, not that topical protection that you get from copper. Now, um, the Ito peonies as well are extremely cold hardy. So, I mean, the herbaceous peonies are also very cold hardy, but we're looking at zones like four to eight on the Ito peonies. The um, plants themselves have a, they do develop a woody um, stem be, that, that we don't see happen in a herbaceous peony. So a little bit of a woody base or woody stem um, maybe three, four inches tall, um, but often they don't regrow from that stem the following spring. They're gonna come from just near it or, or from the soil underneath that stem. So they still do get cut back uh, in winter or late fall to within you know maybe two, three inches of the ground. <clears throat> and then mature plants themselves, of the Ito specifically, flowers can reach sizes of, of like dinner plates so they can be huge flowers. And a mature plant can have 50 or more blooms on it. So again, a dramatic display in the garden. <clears throat> the original peony from the Ito series was just yellow. And um, we still have some really beautiful yellow varieties. Uh, Bartzella, which is this gorgeous one, not quite blooming yet, but very close, very, very close is Bartzella. And we see a kind of a picture of the tag. You've got a picture of oh, Bartzella is also pictured in the handout. But the foliage, the leaves of Bartzella are so pretty. Little edges of kind of plum or burgundy on the leaves as they emerge. And then we're 
this is a you know young plant right this is the kind of starter plant that you would purchase one two three four five six seven eight nine ten at least ten flowers that i can see budded and op ready to open right now and almost color cracking on this one so 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 close this next couple of days of sunshine are gonna make them all pop so that's fun and exciting to come and see at the garden center in fact <clears throat> this peony here i already forgot her name Ta -ta, it's Takara, Takara, ta Kiko, not even close. Kiko here was tight butted when I brought it into this room this morning and I turned the heat on to give it a little incentive and then kind of pushed it open just a little bit so that we could really take a look at how gorgeous it is as it blooms. So uh, we kind of got to watch this flower open in here this morning and it has a faint I'm gonna honestly say kind of funky fragrance so although we know a lot of peonies to be like amazingly you know wonderfully fragrant not all of the Ito peonies are um, nicely scented so I mean that is what it is not every flower has to you know be smelly to be beautiful so we didn't do much to this uh, it's also Keiko but we can see the bud on Keiko and um, how close it is. Here's a few other buds with color. Just a little color beginning to crack on the flower buds. So this will be open in no time. And as I mentioned, just that heat and a little bit of <clears throat> kind of out of the elements. We're gonna see this flower just beautifully open. Here it's you and me. As my mom said, we're the first ones to see this flower bloom ever which is just one of those, like, nobody's ever the first to do anything anymore in this world. So uh, we get to say happy birthday to this peony flower. And it's the first of, gosh, on this one, I'm not even gonna count. This is one plant with maybe an estimate of 25, 30 blooms on it. I'm just ballparking, but uh, you could freeze it, count it, put it in the comments, and you'll win some sort of thumbs up surprise. So the different varieties, so many different varieties of these Itos as well, now coming in colors that aren't just yellow. The plants are really best in the ground. I mean, we're looking, like I said, at a long-term grower. It's going to be there for years and years and years. <clears throat> but first off you could start out with them in containers and then eventually plant them in the ground a year two years or so you could love them in pots on your deck or patio and then find their ultimate home um, for planting in the ground first of all and when we get into planting i'll kind of reiterate this but the best time to plant peonies is actually in the fall as they are going dormant uh, so then they just kind of go to sleep after you've put them in their new home and wake up there in the spring, just like, what? I've always been here. Welcome world, you know? So rather than trying to put them in and make them root out while they're at the most complicated and strenuous and energy, like using time of their lives when they're blooming or budded, that's so expensive energy wise that we don't expect a plant to have the ability to redirect or at, you know ask them to create roots at the same time so it's very difficult for a peony especially um, to become well established if planted at bloom time so waiting till fall is perfect but <laughs> if you wait until fall to try to plant a peony you won't find them anywhere because um, no one's going to walk past this gorgeous flower blooming in the garden center and be like, oh, I'll plant it in the fall. I mean, um, so buy it when you see it, buy it in flower, enjoy it either in a container or take this potted peony, dig a hole in your garden, just dig a hole in the soil, insert the pot and everything into the ground, bury it just like you would or, you know, cover it with soil. And that protects the plant 
from drying out so quickly or even from like blowing over or getting knocked around. You can enjoy it sitting there through the season and, you know, write yourself a little note in your calendar to remember it's not planted yet. Uh, that way you can extract it in the fall as it's starting to die back and you've already got a hole dug. So now you can add a little bit of amendment and get it in the ground at the right time of year. So, <clears throat> oh, I went back to pots. So yes, you can have them in pots, but a big pot is best. And a big pot is, this is a big pot. <laughs> this is 20 inches um, in diameter. So about 20 inches tall and 20 inches wide. 18 inches tall and wide would be about the minimum to try to grow, uh, especially one of these Ito peonies. Um, but even this red charm, I mean, I know it looks big and crazy right now, but it's not that bad um, scale wise for this red charm. Cause remember she's just a baby. So the Ito peonies we're looking at uh, two and a half feet tall by three and a half feet wide. So that's still gonna be like substantially more than this pot uh, once it's grown. And remember, they're also fast growing. So um, we don't wanna stunt them or runt them or find that they're hard to care for by squeezing them into small pots, give them a nice big size, at least 18 inches. Before we get into planting and the details on planting, um, I gotta talk about ants because um, ants and peonies go hand in hand. It is one of those, um, it's, it's, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a known, <laughs> it's again, I'm going to call it like a fact, I guess, but it is a known thing in the garden. If you grow peonies, you know that your peony flower buds are most likely going to be covered with ants. Um, as I mentioned, I ran out into my garden this morning thinking maybe I would cut a few peonies and bring them in. Not a chance because they're not blooming yet. But even though it was still early, all of my flower buds had ants on them. Um, so here I wouldn't find quite as few, uh, quite as many, but uh, it's, it's a common occurrence and it has been kind of mythologized, I guess, over time, some kind of wives tales and, you know, popular theories is that the ants help the flowers open or that it's that the ants are actually critical to the peony blooming by um, both kind of removing the sticky sap that glues the petals closed or tickling the flower essentially to cause it to open. So, I mean, I just proved that we can kind of have an effect on peony blooms, but mostly by warming them up first. And then as the petals begin to release, we can kind of shake or tickle them open. Um, but an ant crawling around on a super tight bud is probably not doing a lot to helping the flower open. There is, however, a symbiotic relationship between the ants and the peony. And that is that the peony's bud is secreting a sugar rich kind of sweet substance. It just can't help it. It's just so uh, fast growing and it's just kind of oozing with nectar and goodness. And so on the outer surface of the flower bud is this sticky substance that does attract ants. And as the ants lick off this sticky substance, they find claim, basically they lay claim to the plant as a food source and they want to protect the food source, which means that then the ants that live on that peony will attack and fend off other pest insects that want to come and bother the peony um, or eat the foliage. So they are defenders of the plant um, so that in exchange, they have this um, lovely sweet syrup to eat. As the flower fully opens, the sweet sticky substance becomes less, um, it's, it's just produced less. And so eventually as a fully open flower, the ants kind of wander off to a new bud that has more sweetness to it. But still, if you cut peony flowers and bring them in the house, you will 
pretty often find um, that the next thing is either, you know, before you've even put them in the vase, you've got an ant or two running up your sleeve. You may see ants kind of randomly dropping onto the, you know, tablecloth that you've set your bouquet down onto. Um, but really it's an easy thing to either cut very early in the morning before ants are very active or present or to take the flower um, bud or in bloom and just qu quickly submerge it under water, either in the sink or in a bucket outside. You could put like a drop of dish soap in that water, which will help kind of drown the insects that come out. But if you just submerge the bloom in water, any insect that's on there is going to release and kind of float to the surface. And so then you could have just, you know, pour out the bucket and bring your flowers inside uh, with fewer, if maybe a couple insects left, but a lot fewer ants. The, uh, by no means is there any harm being done to the peony flower uh, or plant by the ants. So there is absolutely no reason to uh, use an insecticide on the ants or to try to spray the ants with, um, you know, ant control or raid or anything like that. So um, just, you know, know how to not bring them in the house. They're not coming in your house because they're on your peony plant. Um, just leave the ants alone and the ants will help your peonies. Now, planting and timing. As I mentioned, fall. Fall is truly the best time to plant your peonies, and that is as they are going dormant for the season. Fall would be considered for us in the Portland metro area. September, October is really the ideal window for planting your peonies, which is great because that's October. You're out doing all kinds of fun things like planting fall bulbs that'll bloom in the spring as well. Tulips and daffodils. Your garlic can go in in October. Um, cover crops. You know, there's lots of great things to do in October in the garden and putting your peony in for the, for the you know, official planting is um, best done at that time as well. Now, we want to dig a nice wide hole, but not necessarily any deeper. Fill the hole with water. Um, once you've got a hole open, especially on a plant that we know is sensitive to poor drainage, it's great to witness what happens to the water that fills this hole. And the only way to do that is to fill it up with water while it's still open and see how long it takes for that water to drain away. Now, um, if you are looking at uh, a day before the water leaves that hole after filling it, um, then you're probably not great for, that's probably not great for planting a peony there. If it takes uh, an hour, a couple of hours to drain, you can add something like pumice. Um, pumice is my favorite draining uh, drainage amendment. So that is easily added to your native soil. Even some like comp soil building conditioner, like our soil builder conditioner breaks up loose, it helps loosen clay and breaks it up. So adding pumice for drainage, um, mending with something that's gonna help break up that clay and improve the drainage over time um, and even potentially planting your peony a little bit on the higher side, so a little bit out of the soil, and then mounding your soil up to the crown of the plant to get it out of that wet, wet soil just, a, just by a couple inches is going to help it as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the hole, you can add um, all-purpose fertilizer and bone meal. So here we have... Uh, maybe I didn't grab bone meal. What does it matter if I'm holding up a package? Just pretend it says bone meal, right? So all-purpose fertilizer, which is just 444. Four, four. We've kind of go, gone over this before. All the numbers are the same in an all-purpose fertilizer. The organic blends we like to suggest because they are um, gentle feeding, slow release, and um, organic, as I mentioned, they can go right into the planting hole instead of being um, something that potentially you don't want to have in contact with the roots, which could burn a plant. So organic safely put right into the planting hole. All-purpose all fertilizer generally has bone meal in it. So if you, as I mentioned, bone meal is often what you're using when you're planting out all those tulips and daffodils. So all those fall blooming bulbs, bone meal is a great thing to be planting with them. 
So you may just have that on hand. Bone meal would be fine with your peonies, um, but if not, all-purpose fertilizer is great as well. Remove the plant from the pot. So as the, you know, if you've had it kind of healed, the technical term for planting a pot or kind of temporarily planting a plant is healed in. So if you have it healed in, um, in its, maybe in its ultimate home, then get the pot out of the ground, widen and kind of, you know, shape your hole or get your hole prepared, fill it with water as I mentioned, put your bone meal or your all-purpose fertilizer in, and then <clears throat> as you replant the peony in the ground, so you're going to sink the roots and root ball into the ground, it's important that you keep the soil line the same as it is currently in the pot or by at least no more than two inches deeper. <clears throat> so if you look at the soil line where we have the peony uh, stems coming right out of the soil, we would want to no more than an inch to two inch deeper or ideally leave the soil line the same. So match that in the planting hole, not cover it way deeper uh, or sink it down like you do on tomatoes or some other plants. Uh, as well on the root ball itself, you can go ahead and loosen it some if you've got a lot of roots coiling. But remember that the plant will be going dormant um, so it's all going to die back from above ground as winter comes. And if you've got that concern about drainage in the hole, planting it <clears throat> slightly higher than your soil grade and then gradually mounding soil up to meeting that same soil level that you have in the original container. Planting a peony too deeply is one of the primary causes of um, them not flowering at all. So I do, do hear that from people occasionally. You know, I have a peony plant in my garden and it makes a nice bush, but it never blooms. Um, now, uh, sometimes even the original peony went in at the right level, but maybe over the years, bark mulch and mulch has been applied, which slow, you know, over time will bury that crown and those eyes, we call them, which are where the buds really are uh, to form the flowers, those get buried too deeply. So if that's a concern for you and you think that, you know, you've got a, a very healthy peony bush that doesn't make flowers, trying to pull back the mulch um, very delicately. You don't want to rip through roots that might be at the surface, but trying to uncover it a little bit to see if you can't help to stimulate buds to form uh, by by uncovering those eyes basically in the soil. <clears throat> Sometimes people buy peonies uh, as, they're not really bulbs, but they're like um, dormant roots. So sometimes you buy them in packages at the same time as you would buy like, uh, again, tulips and daffodils or occasionally spring perennials as well. Um, so when you are planting from a bulb or a root division, it's much, much, much easier to accidentally get that plant at the wrong level in the ground. So if you're looking at your root, like a bare root out of a package, you'll have to kind of look closely to see the eyes um, or the buds and where they come out of the root itself. And that is, I mean, kind of like a potato has eyes, you know, I mean, they're not like blink, blink, right? So you, they're like little points that you can kind of see that growth will come out of. So you have to look closely to see those eyes. And again, no more than two inches deeper um, in the soil, no, no, no more than two inches deep in the soil to bury those eyes. Now, um, of course, then, you know, backfill with native soil and potentially blended compost, depending on how your soil is, poorly draining, add that soil building conditioner to loosen up clay. If you're in a lot of sand, you might want to add some compost to help hold a little bit more nutrient and water. So depending on where you are and what your soil is like, 
uh, you will add appropriate amendment or not. And they're not, so peonies, again, they're not, uh, they're not fussy. They're not heavy feeders. They're fine with our like slightly acidic soil that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. So native soil pH is just fine. They uh, would appreciate like a granular all purpose organic fertilizer, maybe each spring. Um, you could give them either, as I mentioned, the all purpose 444, which is more granular and mealy. So if you're going to sprinkle this around on the top, like a top dressing, you'll want to scratch it in to the soil, just like the top half inch or inch of soil, and then water that in to start incorporating this into liquid form and working it down into the soil surface. A little bit easier to apply um, and still all purpose, but five, five, five. So one percentage more of the nutrients, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is Paradise Blend. Now still made by GMB, still organic, um, but Paradise is pelletized. Um, I guess that's an easy way to remember it. Paradise is pelletized. So um, uh, you can kind of hear it. It's like little bits, uh, kind of round or linear pellets that are easier to either just like scatter and toss or just sprinkle around the plants. No scratching in necessary. Still a good idea to water it in if it's not gonna rain right away to activate the food. Um, but these granular fertilizers would be great to add as the new growth emerges in the spring just to give the plants a little pick-me-up. Um, they are typically slow release and long feeding. So we're looking at six, eight weeks at least of fertilizing um, that comes from a single application. And uh, really if you, I mean, if you had in your shed vegetable fertilizer, cause you are planting uh, vegetables in, and you wanna give some to your peony, uh, they would love the tomato vegetable herb fertilizer four, six, three. So again, we're using something that has really no more than like four or 5% nitrogen, but six, that middle number is phosphorus, which is going to help us uh, encourage blossom set and buds <clears throat> or similar, the GMB bud and bloom. So all purpose, paradise, tomato, veg, bud and bloom. Like I said, they're not finicky or picky, bud and bloom three, seven, four. So still, um, all, all, a little over twice as much phosphorus as we have of the nitrogen. So watching that, that balance um, so that we're not giving them a ton of nitrogen. You wouldn't give them like lawn fertilizer, right? Which is like 25 is the first number or whatever for lawn food. So in fact, the Ito peonies are even known to be uh, a bit nitrogen sensitive so we would wanna make sure that they're not being fed something like, um, again, Portland Rose Society 151010, not great for Ito peonies. Um, it's not gonna be their favorite. It's too rich in nitrogen. It's probably gonna cause like softer, floppy, loose, leafy growth that may not be as sturdy in the weather and um, then require supports and all of that kind of stuff. So pruning. Pruning is really basic and easy on peonies. The herbaceous peonies, as I mentioned, they're gonna die back in the winter time. So you could after, well, cutting a bouquet is one form of pruning, right? So you could just cut wherever you want the stem length to be to bring a peony into flower. <clears throat> it's, yeah, sometimes they do make secondary flowers on the stems, but if you're gonna cut it, cut it don't worry about whether or not you're losing another flower bloom enjoy the bloom you have that's like a t-shirt i should make so cutting them for flowers is one um, stage of pruning but as they begin to turn colors in the fall and maybe yellow or brown and start to fade away you can cut them all the way to the ground and then compost or discard the foliage if you've had any type of uh, fungal problems, leaf spottage on the plant that season, 
it's more important that you do that pruning and get rid of the diseased foliage so it doesn't hang around to potentially infect the new growth that comes out in the spring. And if it is diseased, um, just toss it in the garbage rather than putting it in the compost bin um, so that again we have less tendency of spreading or recirculating disease in our compost. The Ito peonies a little bit different. They need to be just lightly pruned. Um, as they die back in the fall, you'll have that sort of woody structure at the base. In fact, here, I should have thought about this. So if you kind of look close up on the inside here, you can see the nice kind of pink and green new stems from this year. And then down here at the base, we see clearly woody, sticky looking growth from past years, last year's leaf stock. Uh, so those, as I mentioned, are not necessarily where the growth came from this year, but just behind, below, or to the side of the previous year's stems is where we see the new stems grow. So cutting those back to an inch or so, that could be done even in early spring as we see the new growth emerge. But you'll want to cut back some of that late season, you know, growth back to that three, four inches or whatever in uh, late fall or early winter just to clean it up. <clears throat> Troubleshooting. Oh, dividing. Yeah, dividing and transplanting. That's also, you can do that. And that dividing peonies is best done in the fall as well. So um, that should make a lot of sense. But you can dig up an existing plant that's big and old and mature. Let's pretend <clears throat> that this uh, red charm is gonna be divided. Now we would of course want this to be probably like twice its, its width. So <clears throat> twice as many stems coming out of the ground as we see now. But once we have a bigger plant, as it starts to turn colors and die back in the fall, you could dig the whole plant out of the ground and now using like a hori hori knife or a sharp spade, split the plant down the middle, creating essentially two halves that will be replanted separately to continue to grow and fill out uh, on their own uh, for the next several years. Now you could never divide a peony or you could divide a peony every like, 10 years if you wanted to give them off to your friends and family. Um, but dividing a mature plant can potentially set it back the year after it's been divided and possibly cause it to not bloom or have a reduced flower uh, flowering the following season. So both divisions may just take a year or two to get back to their previous like status and bloom quality and quantity after division. And the same with transplanting. If you decided that you just have a peony in a wrong place, um, if over the years the like surrounding garden has grown and has created um, challenging shade and now you want to move the peony to a sunnier location, best done in the fall, um, and at the same time, you know, taking all of that care as you transplant it into the new location um, to keep the, you know, soil line at the same level, um, checking for drainage, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Troubleshooting beyond um, why it doesn't bloom. I mean, why a peony isn't going to bloom is either not enough sun, potentially some, you know, nefarious action from your gardener or neighborhood kids or whatever, whacking off the blooms or taking off the blooms. I mean, that could happen. Uh, or the plant itself has been planted too deep. I mean, and if we're looking at like year after year after year, not a bud, not a nothing, it's planted too deep is my guess. As long as you've already acknowledged that it's in enough sun. So uh, sun and, wa and, and the planting depth, most important. Uh, secondly, we do occasionally see 
uh, blight. And blight on peonies can be like, as the, as the growth emerges in the spring, it just gets hammered by weather, wet, cold, and it just kind of turns black and begins to wilt. It almost looks like it doesn't have enough water, um, but you know better because you're, you know, it's saturated. And so we want to find any diseased portions of the plant and remove them so that we don't have that uh, potential spread of the disease. So prune it out, cut it out. And then not a bad idea, as I mentioned, if you know that this plant has dealt with blight for years, and again, we see it happening this year, being proactive and getting on it right away with either the copper fungicide spray or a systemic like Serenade. It's going to help quite a bit. And occasionally we see, this is like a, a bud, more of a, a bud blight, I suppose you would say. So this flower here got to the like slightly larger than a pea stage of forming a flower bud. And then you can see, actually here, we don't have to use this angle because it's no good. I'm going to cut it off. So we can see that the bud wanted to form and then the decay hit. And so we see that black decay, brown actually decay, right where the bud was coming out of the plant. And that rot or fungal decay then just worked its way up to the flower bud that was trying to open and killed it off before the flower could form itself. So this is a, uh, this is, the leaf looks fine. It's just the bud which normally would not be out in such wet cold weather uh, that was the buds protest to the wet cold weather and so it said nope and um, it's gone so we could have probably also pruned it out like so instead of taking this whole leaf off i don't believe that we'll see any kind of spread of that fungal disease onward and the rest of the plant I mean, it came from what well, came from this plant here which the rest of the plant looks very healthy and so this is not something that I would like rush out and panic spray it yes we had but a little bit of petal blight on this emerging flower which now because I have deconstructed it anyways I'm going to go ahead and prune like I was going to cut it for a bouquet isn't that beautiful and the the rest of this plant because it's so young we may see another bud or two form on it this season or not. And if it doesn't, that's fine. It's still developing um, and has a great chance of giving us lots of good flowers next year when maybe it's not so wet and cold as well. I'm gonna call it covered. We've covered the topic of peonies. Uh, class is dismissed. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Happy gardening.